Hey AP Physics C, this is Horner and we're looking at 2007 AP Physics C Mechanics number three. You have an apparatus, uh, it's used to study the conservation of energy. There's a spring constant here on the spring equal to 40 newtons per meter and uh, that spring is attached to a string, a really light string that has no mass I guess. Uh, and there's a glider and on top of the glider a little box so that when you pull the glider back this way and you stretch the spring, the spring then accelerates this block uh, and the glider in this direction and then right at a point just before the photo gate the maximum speed is attained. Okay, and then it just travels across till it hits the spring. So at this point you would also have a maximum kinetic energy and over here when you pull it back to, to stretch it you have uh, potential energy due to the spring. So the first thing that they want us to do is assuming no energy is lost so we know that this is a conservative it is a conservative force, Ryan equation for the conservation of mechanical energy. And when you do that, you want to just think about the two things that you have in the problem. Uh, at first, we don't have any speed, so our kinetic energy is equal to zero, so don't worry about it. But we do have potential energy of the spring. Uh, and then once the spring is no longer stretched, we will not have any potential energy of the spring, but we will have kinetic energy, and we'll just call these two, and these are at situation number one. So for the uh, spring, the potential energy of spring, we know is one-half kx squared, and we know for kinetic energy, it's just one-half mv squared. The thing that they really want to make sure that you do in this is uh, not only go through and have the equation, but they want you to plug in the value for k. Um, I think they just ran out of points on this problem. It's a 15-point problem, and so they went back and said you needed to have this. But nonetheless, uh, on this one, you need to include the value for the k uh, or the constant of the spring. So that is worth two points. Really get one point for showing conservation of energy and one point for having the whole thing with the constant and it's just kind of weird. Um, so let's go on and look at the next part. In the next part they want you to plot all of the points. They tell you to plot v squared, not v, but v squared versus x squared, not just x. For v squared we know that our units are a meter squared per second squared. Always include the label as well as the units. This is x squared and then we're going to do times 10 to the negative second meter squared. Uh, and the reason we're doing that is now we can just put whole numbers here. So 0 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, and 2.5. This is our zero point for this one. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 for these values. At this point, we need to go ahead and put our points in. So our first point's about right here. Second point, you should have about right there. Third point occurs right here. Your fourth point's kind of off a little bit. It's maybe about right there. And then your fifth point should be a point that is up here. So, so far, what they would give us for this is, for, is three points. They would say um, for this part, point part B, uh, they just said plot these things. They didn't say draw a line yet. So this is three points. One point for making sure that your axes have the right numbers on them, that you have your labels and your units, and that you've plotted at least four of the five points correctly. Next thing that they want us to do is actually draw a line through all those points. So we're going to do that next. Um, and so we're going to start it right at this one, and then we're going to move our way up. Notice that when you do this, you probably have a point on top and below. So here's a point on top and a point below. Uh, here's a point on top, point close to, and then right at the origin, and then right at the beginning of that. Um, so I'm going to turn this back off so you can kind of see what it looks like. I could probably extend this back down if I wanted to a little bit, just to make sure that it uh, it comes all the way back through. Uh, I won't because it's not going to let me, but nonetheless I could move it. So let's just move it down a little bit so that it travels through. So I've done that, and it's not going to let me do it, which is fine. So anyway, we could show that this is going all the way through zero, and that's probably the best thing to do. Um, it's just not letting us do it at this point. So we've drawn the best fit line through the data, and that's my other point. That's my fourth point. So this is three, and then drawing the best fit line is four. For the next part of the problem, they want us to use the best fit line to obtain the mass of the glider. So this part confuses people. I think once you see it, 
it'll make sense, but until you see it, it's a little bit weird. Um, we know that uh, when we did the plot, we first started with 1 half mv squared is equal to 1 half kx squared. So we were looking at the uh, kinetic and the potential energy. If we reduce this down, if we get rid of the halves, and we solve this for v squared, that'll be equal to k over m times x squared. Now, what did we plot? We plotted v squared versus x squared. So if you look at this and we said this is y is equal to mx plus b, and we don't, we're going through the origin, this guy right here is our slope. But we don't have a value for m. In fact, that's what we're looking for. But we do have a value for v squared over x squared, and that is also the slope. So we can say that that is equal to k over m. But this just isn't v squared over x squared. It is the change in v squared over the change in x squared. That will give us slope. So let's pick some values for the velocity. So we're going to say slope here is equal to the change in velocity. So we're going to do 4.8 minus 1.0. And we're going to divide by that by the change in the position. And the two points we're going to use are 2.4 minus 0.5. So if you look at your graph, you'll see that those points are on the line. When you're done, you should get a value of 2 times 10 to the second. And the unit for this, remember this is a meter squared per second squared. This is a meter squared, so the meter squared cross off. So you have 1 over a second squared, which is a second to the negative 2. And that is your k over m value. So if we think about this, if slope is equal to k over m, and I rearrange this for m, m is going to be equal k over the slope. So let's just do that. Our k value is 40 newtons per meter. And our slope, we just calculated, is 2 times 10 to the negative second, uh, second squared. A newton, remember, is really a kilogram meter per second squared. So notice that our meters cross off, our seconds squared cross off, and we're left with just kilograms. So now our answer here is 0 0.20 kilograms. They'll take any answer in between 0.18 all the way up to and including 0.22 kilograms based on how your slope came out and what numbers you use for your slope. But the value that we got uh, for the mass of that block is about 0.20 kilograms. So let's go on to part D. In part D, uh, when we look at this one, we've got now a little bit of a change. And the change here is the track is slightly tilted. So if you're really thinking clearly about this one, you'll recognize that before we only had two types of energy. We had kinetic, okay? So the kinetic energy we said was right here. We had the potential energy to the spring. But now because it's up, the block has two things working on it. One of them is the potential energy of the spring is pulling it in this direction. And then gravity is also pulling it down. So now we have potential energy due to gravity or gravitational potential energy. So uh, the best way to start this one is, assuming no energy is lost, write a new equation for the conservation of mechanical energy that applies to the situation. So everything here is conservative. Um, we know that we're going to end up with speed, so that'd be 1 half mv squared. And the two things that we have, the two types of energy are potential due to the spring, so that's 1 half kx squared plus m g, now this gravitational potential, and that's usually h, but we got to be careful because if I pull this block back and let's say that the center of the block is now here, then my height changes so it gets a little bit bigger. So it goes from here to here and then all the way down. If I pull the block all the way back here, notice if I extend this h line out, so now I have h right here and I'm going to draw this in red. The middle of the block coming down to here adds more height. So depending on how far back I pull it, I also add more and more height to it. So we've got to figure out what is that height? How do we figure this total height for this h that we're going to put here? So to do that, let's think about uh, if I pull it from here all the way back to here, I know that I have a right triangle. Okay. So if I look at the right triangle that I have right here, 
So I'm going to draw that right triangle. I'm looking for this side, this opposite side to the angle. Luckily, they showed us this angle and the angle that we have right here, so that's this angle, are the same. This distance is x, so if this distance is x, this distance will be x times the sine of the angle. If I know this distance and then I add to it my h, so that's the, the height from the middle of the block down when it's not stretched at all. So this double box here is no stretch. When I bring it back and I put it here where it is stretched, then I have to add this little bitty height, and that's this height here. So this is going to be mg, and then it's the quantity h plus x sine of the angle. So that's really important for you to be able to see. Uh, that is the correct answer. That actually gets four points. So you get one point for uh, having all the energy types, U, S, K, and U, G. You get, there is a difference in height, that's a point, for the correct expression for uh, U, G, which is M, G, and then the quantity H plus X sine of the angle. You get a point, and then substituting it into the correct equation. So making sure that you've got it on this side and not on the other side. Um, if you got the first two points, then you could get the second two. If you just put this, you wouldn't get it. So you've got to make sure that you show all these different types of energy. I would probably put K is equal to US plus UG, and then that will give you that first couple of points, and then you're going to get the rest of the points down here. The last part of this problem asks you uh, to uh, answer the question, will a graph of v squared plus uh, versus x squared for this new experiment be a straight line? Absolutely not. It won't be because this plot is only a v squared versus x squared. And this is just the compression. Where is the gravitational potential energy? So where is ug? It's not in here. So that would curve this one way or the other. So here we just need to say, uh, justify your answer. Um, we could say ug is not accounted. A-C-C-O-U-N-T for n uh, this graph. And because it's not, you're going to get some sort of weird graph. I don't know if it's going to be Groot, if it's going to be this. Uh, it's definitely probably not going to be this, because our original graph, if you remember it, was a straight line going like this. So it's going to be skewed a little bit. It's probably going to be bowing one way or the other, either uh, uh, square root or it's going to be quadratic, one of the two. And that is the end of 2007 uh, Mechanics APC Problem number three.